guys, welcome back to 365 Empowerment, your channel for daily motivation and inspiration. Ah, so today, right, I got a really, really powerful message for you. And it's a carryover from yesterday's of you're not broken, you don't need to fix yourself. Um, but what I want to talk about is the emotions that you identify yourself with is ultimately the culture and the fabric in which you weave your life. Uh, what do I mean by that? I mean that the, the emotion you identify yourself, whether you're um, isolated or you're depressed or you don't feel that you're beautiful, or you don't feel you're amazing or you're combative or you know, you're an aggressive type person, that is exactly the type of life you're going to leave. And ultimately that's gonna also be how people treat you. And so it's gonna become a constant culture of just feeding it into itself and a bunch of self-fulfilling prophecies. Um, so an example uh, of this for myself in the way a feeling can control you and ultimately lead you into certain situations and perceptions. Um, at a very, very young age, um, my biological father decided that he wanted to start another family uh, and that he wanted nothing to do with me. It was a very, very difficult time in my life, uh, very difficult to understand and comprehend um, because it was almost like overnight and <laughs> over the phone, uh, the loss of a parent whom you, you never got to see again. Um, not that at this point, you know, he and I don't talk and it's kind of by choice because it's just, I've grown as a person without it. I just don't feel I need it. Um, but it, neither here nor there, what it manifested in my life was this feeling of um, just being second best, that I couldn't be number one because I was left for someone else. Um, it took me years, right, to understand this, to understand the emotion um, that, was embedded that I subconsciously embedded in my own life. Um, and it wasn't until recently that I really started to notice the impact uh, throughout my life that it was leading. It was leading a wake of unrealized potential because I just didn't think that I would be good enough, you know, at either sports or other things. Like I always had to be number two. I couldn't be number one. It was very, very difficult. And then looking back, it just led <laughs> to a little bit of frustration. And my wife and I just had this conversation about, like, I finally just realized, like, that's what had been, I think, holding me back for so many years. Um, and that feeling is that, like, I couldn't speak up or that I couldn't, you know, do videos like this. And so I just decided, you know what? Someone has no control over me um, in that capacity anymore. and. I have to just let that emotion go because it's not good for me, right? Um, but then I also noticed that that feeling manifested other people's uh, reaction to it. You know, they treated me as if I was second best because of that's the energy I was putting into it. They put it in, in there as like, you're great and all, uh, but <laughs> no one wants to hear that word. Um, so moving past that, right? Like moving past that emotion, I don't feel that way anymore. Uh, I only get positive feedback. Not because I choose to listen to the negative, but because I have embraced that I'm good at something or that I'm great at something and I'm just gonna go all full force into that and just move forward. So that's kind of what I'm encouraging. But on the flip side of the emotional aspect of what you weave for yourself. So like if you don't feel that you're a beautiful person or you don't you feel like you're combative and aggressive, you know, people are going to be ready for a fight if you are an aggressive person or you feel and that's how you identify because they're going to automatically assume like if they know you that it's going to be a fight, like that they got to stand their ground. Um if they don't know you, they're probably going to figure it out really quickly. Um, not only just based off of like your body language, but your tone of voice, your speech pattern, um, our bodies pick that up really, really quickly. So they're going to escalate to that level too, and it's going to be difficult to come across to them. And then you're going to be frustrated, like I said, vicious cycle. Um, and you're going to leave that wake and that trail in your life. 
Uh, same with it, like being depressed. Um, you know, people are going to coddle to that. People are going to come down to that level uh, to try to nurture you or so they perceive like as nurturing and it's just going to fulfill itself. Um, and as negative things happen to you life, in life, you know, challenges or obstacles, um, or as I like to call them, opportunities happen to you in life, um, you know, you're going to see the worst in it and it's just going to be a bunch of self-fulfilling prophecies and you're just going to get stuck in that regard. Um, but another thing that I've noticed within my own life and it's just interpersonal communications is that if I talk to somebody who um, is notoriously like a depressed person or a negative person, my tone of voice, my speech pattern changes to like mirror theirs. Um, and I think that's even a whole topic of like mirroring, like human beings, we do it all the time, like leading and pacing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it just comes into the way our subconscious is like kind of linked, you know, our communication patterns. So I just want to make that aware to you. So that way you can identify that if you feel that's your identity. Um, my suggestion is to fix it if you're interested in doing that, even though I said you're not broken, you're not. Um, but that's also probably not the identity that you want for yourself if you feel you're depressed and or you don't feel you're beautiful or you don't feel you're wanted or if you feel like you were abandoned at some point. Um, because those aren't great feelings to have because you're amazing, you're unique, you're awesome. Uh, but you have to realize that and you have to put it together. Um, so what I had to do is I had to just take a step back. Like I had to disconnect and like realize, okay, like, what is going wrong in my life? Why is it going wrong? Um, and I, you know, typically we have to ask ourselves like why to one question and it's a follow up answer until we get to like the root cause. Um, so it was like, well, why are things going wrong? Uh, because I have negative outlook or I don't feel like I could be number one. Well, why couldn't I feel like I could be number one? Um, well, I don't know. Okay, well, why don't you know? And then it's like, well, maybe I was too young to understand this. Oh, okay, now it makes sense. So <laughs> you have to like dig down deep uh, because the first three answers in that why are going to be like kind of like the bullshit fluff <laughs> for yourself. Um, and then it's gonna come down to the last two and those last two are going to be really the deep things that you have to focus on. Like those are gonna be your root cause and then you can fix that. Um, quite literally, very, very easy, almost overnight, assume your new identity um, and then just start your change, start your your own liberation. Uh, so with that, that's where I'm gonna end today's video and I hope uh, you guys saw it to be insightful. Uh, again, if you like the content, you know, click the like button, click the subscribe button. Try to post videos daily so that at least uh, if you subscribe, you can get these videos updated um, as soon as I can post them. So with that, you're beautiful, you're wanted, you're needed, you're loved, you are amazing. And uh, you will get whatever it is you're searching for. Just keep moving, keep moving, stay positive, stay upbeat, keep that energy, live with passion, and love other people. And so with that, guys, I'll see you later.